too soon, Executive. The tale of World of Warcraft is a tale of two tribes. These two games before you may share the same name, but that's where the similarities end. The World of Warcraft of yesteryear is not the same as the World of Warcraft of today. As year and decade passed, the game saw a significant drop in quality. The player base, once united in solidarity, split in two. Thus, the tribes formed. The first tribe is known as the Retail Retards. Those who continue to stay subscribed to the game, buying each expansion without question. These men have no problem using their mom's credit card to buy the pay-to-win WoW token, or perhaps some store mounts, maybe even some pets. They love transmog, they love flying, and most importantly, they love soy and Reddit. The second tribe, on the other hand, is known simply as the Classic Chads. They remembered when the game was good. They knew the formula of the Holy Trinity that made the game great, and they wanted to go back to the good old days. Sadly for them, however, Blizzard did not seem to care about them. Thus, they quit the game en masse, their pride in hand, and created their own server to play on, with Blackjack and Hookers. This server was known as Nostalrius. Unfortunately, Blizzard would soon unleash their wrath upon the realm and shut it down indefinitely. Their army of lawyers ready to strike, much to the delight of the retail retards. It seemed like all hope was lost for the classic chance, but little did they realize that behind the scenes, Blizzard was working on something. Something that would change the game forever. So I have been pissed off with World of Warcraft for a long time. Starting around MOP, meh, it wasn't that bad, but it was starting to annoy me. Now, Warlords of Draenor... That, that... That was really bad. But Legion... Legion was a chance. It was a chance to take all the mistakes that Warlords of Draenor made, of which there was many, and correct them. And make the game great again, some would say. But... It didn't. It failed. Despite what the many infinite ass lickers of Legion out there will tell you, Legion was a fucking terrible expansion pack, and a giant disappointment. At least to me personally. So I did what any normal person did. I unsubscribed. When many people unsubscribe from World of Warcraft, it's like, it's a really emotional moment for them for some reason, so they go on the forums and they write this long goodbye thread and listing all the reasons why, and it's like, no one gives a shit. You're not as important as you think you are. A lot of people don't quit at all, they just keep playing the game despite the fact that it just keeps pissing them off over and over and over again. And it's like, if you're not happy, this is what you should do. Put your money where your mouth is. Tell Blizzard why, when you unsubscribe, they ask you. Actually, I don't think they do anymore. But they used to ask you, so I did that. Unsubscribed, adios amigo, farewell, fuck off, gone. And that was it. I honestly thought I was done with World of Warcraft then. I thought, I will never play the game again, I'll never... New expansion, couldn't care less. Until WoW tokens are gone, until player level boosts are removed or any of this other shit, I wouldn't even look at the game, never mind going back. I thought to myself, Blizzard don't care about their players, Blizzard don't care about me, they don't care about you, all they care about is cash. They're gonna milk the remaining morons who still play this game dry, it's never gonna be great again. We're never gonna get a good expansion again, we're never gonna get, I don't know, something like Vanilla WoW? But I really thought that was it, I was done. But then... <laughs> Vanilla. When I found out that they were doing classic WoW, oh my god, I went crazy. I screamed so loud, my girlfriend had to tell me to shut the fuck up. And I never scream. I, I, I barely show emotion for anything ha happy these days. I've become a cynical bastard. But classic WoW, oh my god. I'd been waiting for this for 
for like a decade. Of course, none of us knew at the time that the actual release of the game was one and a half years away from the announcement, which by the way, was the longest wait of my life, but it didn't matter, Classic was coming, and that's all I needed to know. After such a long period of pain, the good times were finally coming back. And so, the long, arduous wait began. I spent my time looking at guides, wondering what race and class to play, professions, what realm, etc. Eventually, I settled on playing a gnome mage, McManor, on the only RP PvP realm available, Zandalar Tribe EU. And after what seemed like a millennia, it happened. It was time for the release. So there we were, late August 2019, the midnight launch. I had my snacks, I had my sodies, I was ready man, I was ready. What you're about to see here is the actual minute the servers went live for the very first time. Headphone users beware. Oh, don't tell me they've delayed it. Don't tell me they've delayed it. Ah! Oh my gosh! Ah! Oh, no way! Oh my god. What? No! Skip! 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 Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cringe, high-pitched voice, whatever. Look, I was excited, all right? I had waited for this for over a decade, okay? I'm gonna be excited. I don't blame me at all. The leveling experience was absolutely... It was fantastic. It was amazing. Meeting all these new players who you had never seen before. Uh, making a guild, making a community. You know, everyone starting from the bottom and just trying to work the way up. It was an experience... It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. It's, it's better than a normal WoW expansion launch, because in a normal WoW expansion launch, not everyone starts from scratch, right? You've got some people who have like 5,000k achievement points in every mount in the game, and then you've got some guy who's just played for the first time ever. But in Classic, it's like everyone is pretty much starting from scratch. We're all starting from level one, big noob clothes, big noob weapon, like we're all we're all in this together sort of thing. It felt much more exciting than a, a normal WoW expansion launch. But all of this would change. As soon as people started to hit 60, whoop, everything went to shit. People started becoming overly organized. Raiding guilds cropped up and started to clash with one another. People became serious all of a sudden. Words like progression became a standard occurrence. People were no longer fun, open, and excited, but cold, rigid, and trying hard. Cliches formed, blacklists became commonplace, and all of a sudden, this wide world of Azeroth that I thought would be a great time felt more like some sort of job market. Everything went to shit. Now, unlike most episodes of Warfall, I'm not going to go into specifics of gameplay here. Dungeons, uh, raids, battlegrounds, because at the end of the day, Classic is pretty much the same gameplay-wise as Vanilla was. I mean, yeah, sure, there's some minute little differences. Oh, the interface menu is different. Big fucking deal. Oh my god, there's a clock on the minimap. Oh, no changes, no changes. It's pretty much the same shit. But what's changed? is time. Times change. There was three things that made Vanilla World of Warcraft so great. Community, reward, and furnace. The holy trinity of Warcraft. All three of those things in Classic have completely fallen on their ass. So let's start with community. Community is arguably the most important thing about World of Warcraft. As an MMORPG, it gave people, who were often socially outcast in reality, a place to belong. World of Warcraft allowed people to make friends, join guilds, and feel like they were a part of something much bigger than themselves. But back in 2004, communication methods were quite limited. Social media websites were scarce, and there was no inbuilt voice chat, which forced people back then to use the archaic application Ventrilo to communicate with others. That is, those who actually had microphones, which was hardly anyone. Truth is, Raiders aside, most people didn't use voice chat, and instead just communicated using the in-game text chat. Nowadays, things have drastically changed. There is a myriad of voice over IP applications at our disposal, from Discord to TeamSpeak, or even Skype if you want to be old school. Websites such as Reddit exist to promote out-of-game sharing of content, YouTube for sharing videos, etc, etc. Point is, a lot of communication done in Classic WoW is actually done outside of the actual game client, unlike back in Vanilla, where it pretty much all was. 
This meant that in vanilla, it was very easy to be part of the community at large, because just by playing the game, you were passively. But now that's all changed. I don't know what server or faction you're playing on, but I guarantee it has an associated Discord and probably even a subreddit attached to it. Problem is, these third-party communication methods aren't ran by Blizzard themselves, but by players just like you and me. Now on paper, this doesn't seem like that much of a problem, but as the old saying goes, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. More often than not, these Discord servers and subreddits are essential to function as a player, to either find out what's going on, or to simply give your two cents. Without access to these, your classic experience is extremely limited, and you are essentially a second-class citizen. Case in point, Zandalar Tribe EU. The Zandalar Tribe Discord and subreddit were made before the server even actually went live, by a dedicated group of players who had started cliching after the WoW Classic announcement all the way back in November 2017. For a year and a half, these players got to know each other, and upon launch, started their own guild. A guild known as Potento. Behind the scenes, Potento controlled, single-handedly, the server Discord and subreddit. Despite on the surface advertising it as server communal property, if someone stepped out of line with Potento, they would be disallowed access to both, like some sort of Nazi regime. This meant that this small group of elite players essentially had the entire server in their hands. If they wanted to lie, spread rumour, or outright silence any player, they could. And that's exactly what they did. Two guilds. The first, Mint. The second, Fairy Tail. Mint refused to bow down to the Potento Reich, whereas Fairy Tail kissed their ass. The results? All Mint members were banned outright from participating in both the Discord and subreddit, whereas Fairy Tail were made moderators. Propaganda started to spread. Mint are suddenly ninja looters, harassers, incels, etc. And in the face of all of this, no Mint member can even respond to these accusations. Before you know it, the entire server believes that Mint are monsters, and the guild collapses. Despite running countless MC and Anixia pugs with zero history whatsoever of ninja looting, because of the inability to communicate properly in the artificial echo chambers Potento created, McManor was now the realm's biggest ninja looter, despite never looting a thing. The guild even went so far as to plant moles in guilds they didn't like. This post just about sums it up best. A screenshot of Mint's guild message of the day, whereby it says to report a player named Geralt for real-life threats. The title makes the accusation of brigading, but here's the thing. Geralt... is in the fucking guild! If these people would have done just a modicum of research, they would have realised that they're making a big fuss over absolutely fucking nothing. Then again, this post was also made by someone who got a Bernie Sanders sticker for their car. Despite being Norwegian! Reddit, thanks so much! This is what's called, ladies and gentlemen, a... joke. But what a fairy tale? Well, it only turned out that Fairy Tale's guildmaster, a man known as Seal, ended up ninja looting his entire guild savings worth a whole 5,000 gold. Arcanite crystals, elementium bars, all gone. Potento's best poodle was later given refuge and protection in Potento shortly afterwards. For when someone really ninja loots, it doesn't matter. All that matters is if Potento likes you or not. And this is just one of many stories of classic WoW cliche corruption. You can't have a properly functioning community when you have subreddits and discords that are ran and totally controlled by middlemen, as all these places devolve into is echo chambers, whereby everyone turns into some sort of Gestapo officer, calling everyone out over absolutely nothing to try to look good for the hive mind establishment. This situation isn't just like this on Zandalar Tribe. I merely use it as an example due to it being a realm I have experienced. No, this is a game-wide problem. But if you thought that was bad, we haven't even started yet. 
Reward is important in a game because players need something to strive for, something to achieve, something to look forward to, something where they can stand in the middle of Stormwind or Orgrimmar or whatever the fuck and just flex and go, yeah, look at me, I have Thunder Fury. Oh, look at me, I have Sulphur Ass. Whatever it is, people need a reason to play the game. They need a Mount Everest to climb. Something that looks really intimidating and impossible, but slowly and slowly they climb it until they get to the top and they can look down on all the peasants and go, fuck you, I'm better. The problem with Classic is that everything has already been done before. Not just a few years ago, but over a decade ago. Everything. It doesn't matter if you have legendary weapons out the arse, a full tier set, Grand Marshal, none of it matters, because it's all been done before. Everything is so well documented, there's a guide for everything, there's probably a guide on how to pick your fucking nose in Classic WoW, you know, it wouldn't surprise me, there's a guide for everything. Oh, look here guys, Praxis just got Realm First Ragnaros. Wait. No one gives a shit. And you know why no one gives a shit? Because the first time Ragnaros was killed, was almost 16 years ago. Congratulations, you managed to defeat a boss that someone did one and a half decades ago. Absolutely amazing job, amazing. Round of applause everybody, round of applause everybody. But let's just be real here. Raiding in Classic WoW is a complete joke. Yes, the raids may have been passable back in 2004, but by today's standards, it's like comparing Photoshop to Microsoft Paint. I mean, seriously, let's go through each boss in Molten Core and you'll see what I mean. Boss 1, Tactics, Kill Ads, to Curse, Done. Boss 2, Don't Stand in Fire, Tank Away from DPS and Healers, Done. Boss 3, Kill Ads, Don't Stand in Fire, Done. Boss 4, Kill Ads, Tank Separately, Kill Boss, Done. Boss 5, Run away if you have the bomb, don't stand in fire, and done. Boss 6. Melee do literally nothing. Ranged kill, done. Boss 7. Kill ads, kill boss, done. Boss 8. Kill boss, done. Boss 9. Kill ads, don't even kill the boss, done. Boss 10. Stand in the right place, kill boss, done. I mean, come on. A chimp with the IQ of a spade could do this with their eyes closed. Now look, I know that BWL, ZG, AQ and Nax are no doubt more challenging than MC, but that's not the point. I'm not trying to be a party pooper here, but honestly, clearing a raid that has been out for almost 16 years isn't exactly an exciting achievement, nor something that should be taken uber seriously. Yet guilds do take raiding seriously, as if their lives depended on it in fact. Remember our old friends Potento? They have a website whereby they state they are a laid-back and chilled guild. Nothing too serious. Well, alright, sounds great to me. Except, to merely apply to this guild, you are greeted with a form that looks like a job application from Indeed. They ask you more questions than a government census. This one right here is my favourite. They want you to write an essay on why you want to join their guild. You expect me to sit here like some sort of chump and write down a novel about why I want to join your oh-so-esteemed establishment. Here's what I think. Now don't get me wrong, I understand having standards and application forms if you're a serious world-first guild, like Method for example, because in many cases this is what they do for a living, professionally. But this is a random, no-name guild on a backwater realm of classic WoW. Why so serious? This guild is even so far up their own ass. they even have a merchandise store. That's right folks, for just the low price of 20 US dollars you can have yourself an officially branded Potento shirt, maybe even a hoodie, XXL size sold out of course. I mean you've got to be joking me, who's going to buy this? Well, I'm a little low on cash for now, so I'll just make my own. Look at this beauty. Can you even tell it's a fake? I like it. Now, for those who claim that I'm bullying Potento here, I want to make clear. There are hundreds of guilds across the classic WoW community who act like this. Too serious, too cold, and too damn egotistical. And when that's coming from me, you know it's bad. Furnace is often misunderstood. 
When it comes to classic WoW, I don't mean stuff like class balance, as changing something as huge as classes would change the game too much, to the point where it would no longer be classic. What I mean by fairness is, is every player in the same place on the track at the start of the race? Or do some players have an unjust advantage over others? And sadly, in classic WoW, they do. Let's start with streaming. Streaming was by far one of the worst things to ever happen to World of Warcraft, bar none. Does anyone remember back in the day when the most well-known players in the game had such prestige because they made amazing things? Whether it be machinimas, songs, PvP montages, etc. Nowadays, whenever you go on YouTube and type in World of Warcraft, it's filled with shitty, low-quality reaction videos from streamers. Half of which aren't even paying attention most of the time. And God forbid you just so happen to share a server with these people. Of which if you do, you'll often come across a horde of people spamming bullshit like POG! POG! POG CHAMP! every five fucking seconds. Oh, Pog, Pog, oh, I swear to fuck you, man. if I hear another person say, Oh, Pog, Kappa, oh, ga Gachi Gasm. The fuck does that mean, Gachi? What? The fuck are you people even talking about? Now, honestly, I think it's stupid to complain about the streamers themselves as people, because more often than not, it's not them who is demanding this sort of nonsense to happen. I blame the morons who watch them. You can't get angry at streamers for what their followers do, if they didn't instigate it in the first place. Fact of the matter is, the WoW player base at large no longer cares or rewards actually decent creations, but instead create false idols and cults of personality around someone, and go apeshit if anyone threatens their perception of these people. But it's not even that that annoys me. What annoys me is that these streamers have such unreal power because of their following. Endless amounts of gold, endless amounts of boosts, endless amounts of gear, you name it. Back in vanilla, everyone was just an individual and had to earn their share like everyone else. But in classic, we now have long established individuals who think they can do whatever they want. And their egos are so large, it makes Potento look good. The best example of this backfiring has to be the story of Joker D, the world first level 60 in Classic. This guy got so many people bowing down before him for that so-called achievement that his ego went so high to the point where he started to ninja items openly. What was going through his head when he did that? Well, let's hear it from him himself. Who do I think I am? Let me tell you who I am. I am world first level 60 in fucking Classic WoW. Well. I can do whatever the fuck I want. You think I'm a random player? You think I'm a fucking random player? Let me fucking clue you in, bitch. I am the guy who had 350 fucking thousand viewers playing this fucking game. Me, not you. The most views ever on this game. The first guy to hit 60. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I can do whatever the fuck I want. This is what happens when you put streamers on a pedestal and they're constantly getting money thrown at them and compliments and blah 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 blah. Oh, they think that their they think that their shit smells like perfume. You know, they think that they're amazing and untouchable and, and better than everyone else. They view themselves as players and us, us mere 17 subscriber plebeians, or we're all just the NPCs in their experience. This is their journey, not ours. Us? Us? We don't care. But they think, oh, you want to take my legendary? Oh yeah, go ahead. It's, it's Joker D. It's jo go fuck yourselves. Seriously, what, what a bunch of fucking jackasses. But what are Blizzard expected to do here? Ban streamers? They can't do that. Fact of the matter is that MMORPGs and streaming are incompatible with one another. Because in a game where everyone can be on the same world at once, and individuals have to work together, he who can gather the biggest crowd will always be the winner, no matter how good at the game you are. And that, truly, is a tragedy for the average player. But forget about streamers for a moment. Why don't we talk about something Blizzard can help? Customer support. Anyone remember how cool Blizzard GMs were back in the day? They would make jokes, have a laugh, even sometimes come and visit you in-game. Well, that's not the case anymore, let me tell you. It's common knowledge now that Blizzard laid off a ton of their customer support staff around Watt. This meant massively increased waiting times for tickets. Now, I didn't really care about this personally, because it didn't bother me until it did, because Blizzard created what has to be the most moronic system I have ever seen implemented in a game. A system I call democratic silencing. 
Spammers are a pain in the ass. In the past, they would only be silenced after a manual human review. But Blizzard didn't like this, so they created a system that was intended to counteract that. If a player got around four or five reports in roughly the same minute, they would no longer be able to chat or mail. This would only be revoked after a manual human review. Anyone else see the blatant flaw in this system? Anyone can just get their group of friends on Discord, coordinate a mass report at the same time, and bam! That player can't do shit anymore. And that's exactly what happened to me and many others I know. And it's not like you need an army of 40, 50 players to silence someone. No, all you need to silence someone is like, what? I think it's four players or something like that. So every single time I would open my mouth and it could be something as inconspicuous as hello, disconnected from server. Oh, oh, I got a new email. You have been silenced for 500 hours or whatever. I mean, who the democratic silencing? Who the hell thought that giving players game master powers would be a good idea? And get this, the silence doubled every single time from 24 hours to 48 hours, etc. All the way to the maximum of a month. When silenced, you can't talk in say, yell, party, general, trade, local defense, looking for group, world, emote, or even respond to whispers unless the person has you on their friends list. You can only still talk in guild chat, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, as what's to stop someone from just asking their guild to talk on their behalf? This is just the most moronic system I have ever seen. So of course, after being tired of being silenced for no justifiable reason whatsoever, time and time again, I decided to make a ticket, and this is about how it went. Thank you for calling Blizzard Entertainment. Your call is important to us. Press 1 for billing. Press 2 to report a player. Press 3 for an in-game problem. Press... Thank you. You shall be put through to a Game Master in just a few moments. Please hold. Thank you for calling this entertainment. My name is Game Master Gromskull. Can I have your name and realm, please? Uh, hey, my name is McManor. I play on Zandalar Tribe EU in Classic. Okay, sir. And how can I help you? Okay, this is the problem. I keep getting report bombed by trolls on my server. I am quite the notorious player on my realm, and whenever I speak, I get reported for spam and automatically silenced pending Game Master review. I can't play an MMORPG where you can't talk to other people. It's a nightmare. It's happened three times in a row. Each time I am innocent, and I would like some sort of immunity from this blatant flaw in design. Okay, sir, just give me a moment. Okay, sir, you have been silenced by our game masters for breaking the terms of use. Your silence will not be removed, and we will not be looking into you anymore. Appeal for this issue, okay? No, no, I, I don't think you understand. A game master hasn't silenced me. Players on my server have. It is a coordinated attack. They are abusing the automatic mute system. Okay, sir, just give me a moment. Okay, sir, you have been silenced by our game masters for breaking the terms of use. Your silence will not be removed and we will not be looking into any more appeal for this issue, okay? Wait, what? Are you, are you serious? Hello? Thank you for calling, sir. Wait, what? Are you serious? Hello? Oh, for fuck's sake. Despite being silenced for saying hello, the game master refused to help and basically told me to go fuck myself. Do you seriously expect me to pay £12.99 a month, which by the way, don't think I forgot that you increased it from £8.99 to £12.99 back when the pound was strong, you bunch of fucking pricks. Do you really expect me to pay £12.99 a month to play an MMORPG where I can't even speak to other people for no reason whatsoever? Something that especially annoys me is that notice how it says chat and mail privileges. Privileges? Excuse me? How the fuck is it a privilege to communicate with other players in an MMORPG? Get bent. Don't even get me started on the bots. 
Anyone on Alliance ever try to seriously play Alterac Valley? If so, you'll know that half of the fucking team AFK in the spawn cave and never move, most of which are botting for honour. I mean, seriously, what is the point of going for the honour grind if you're just going to cheat? Do you seriously think that people will think you're cool because you got Grand Marshal 16 years late? Meanwhile, in reality, you are watching My Little Pony while your intel does all the work. You fucking losers. But don't expect Blizzard to do anything about it. Oh no, they're too busy counting their money from all us saps. Such a pathetic company. So, there we have it folks, World of Warcraft Classic. There's only one thing left to do now, the ratings. First, let's give the game a players before profit classification. This judges the game purely on how financially respectable it is to its customers. There are five points that determine a game's players before profit classification. The first, does the game have microtransactions? Yes, you can realm change, which wasn't available in the vanilla version of the game, which significantly diminished the community reputation aspect, as if you get a bad rep, now you can just leave your realm. And I know, as I did. In fact, in the Chinese version of the game, the WoW token even exists, which worries me immensely for the Western market. But Blizzard would never be that stupid. <laughs> right? Fail. Second, is the game actually finished? Well, considering this is a re-release of a game from 2004, yes. Pass. Third, does the game have a physical copy? No, but considering that this is an online-only game that requires a subscription anyway, it wouldn't matter regardless, so pass. Fourth, is the game pushing a political agenda? Though the recent expansions of the game certainly do, albeit mildly, Classic was before all of this political bullshit infested our lives, so no, pass. And fifth, do the developers respect their customers? Considering they can't even be asked to make a proper customer support service on an MMORPG, absolutely not. Fail. World of Warcraft Classic has failed two of the five tests, giving the game a yellow players before profit classification. And now, the actual game rating, and believe me when I say, this was the toughest game to rate yet. I am the sort of person, just as you probably are if you're still watching this, who really, really wanted Classic to succeed, who was absolutely 100% certain that Classic would be a success. And in a way, yeah, it is, I'm sure it's been a success. It's a success for Blizzard Entertainment, I'm sure they're raking in the fucking money. But f for me, I leave Classic feeling deflated feeling like it was a disappointment. I mean, I'm not going to say the game is shit. World of Warcraft is the best game of all time, in my opinion. But World of Warcraft Classic is not World of Warcraft Vanilla. And that is important. This picture right here is perhaps the best description that I can give of what WoW Classic is and what WoW Vanilla was. WoW Vanilla was a, a unique adventure, it was tense, people had no idea what awaited them, it, it was new, it was fresh, it was exciting. And WoW Classic is a bunch of people pretending that it's important, pretending that it's unknown, and pretending that it's fresh. And in reality we're all just role-playing about the, the good old days with our rose-tinted goggles on. It's a good game. Hey, it's way better than that pile of garbage that they call Ward, Legion, whatever. But it ain't no vanilla. And that's the truth. In most cases, a Ruhr would be considered a success. But this is World of Warcraft we're talking about, and this game deserved so much better. I'm not even going to give the usual free positive and free negative takeaways, as honestly, this just makes me sad to make. I haven't played Classic WoW in about four months, and I have no skin in the game anymore. But it doesn't matter, the game still goes on, I'm just one guy, and this production will probably only get about 10 views anyway, because that's just how it works. But I couldn't help but give my thoughts as a classic fanatic about just how much of a disappointment this whole thing was for reasons I could have never anticipated. The game is as great as it ever was. A shame the players aren't.